Hello guys and gals, welcome back. Today is another user request. The artist Mant Deep has been in touch on the DMs and was asking me how I got the groove on my Deep House tracks. Particularly his favorite is Holding On For Your Love and that's one of my favorites too. More than happy to dive into that. Now initially the questions were based around drums but Having done this for a while, I can tell you from experience, there is a lot more to groove than just in the drums. Groove is the interplay of all the elements in your tracks. So I've paid a visit to the Mant Deep YouTube channel, which I've linked down below. And his latest track was called Angel at the time. And he's kindly agreed for us to take a look. So let's do a deep dive into Deep House Grooves. Okay, so before we look into the tracks themselves, I want to do a little groove experiment with, uh, I've got an 808 drum machine here. Well, not a real one. Those are way too expensive. <laughs> not uh, that rich yet. Um, this is just the Ableton internal one. And it's playing our straight drum rhythm, which is the same groove I have in my Holding On For Your Love track. What we call the Boots and Cats rhythm. Boots and Cats, Boots, well... I hope other people call it that, or else it makes me look crazy. You see, boots and cats, boots and cats. So these are this is the same drum placement. And my first point is, you can hear that sounds like a different groove, even though the drums are placed in exactly the same place. So the first thing is obviously not all drums are created equal. If you're browsing samples instead of making your own drum patterns, then that's very clearly obvious to you already. So the first element is drum tone, but there's other things I'd like you to listen out for. And the reason I've loaded this 808 drum machine is it lets you change the drum length, especially the kick drum. So here's our normal groove. But if I lengthen the kick, That changes the groove, right? We haven't moved any drums. We've just changed the sound of one of the, the length of one of the drums. Very different grooves. So that can happen with the snare as well. If you add, say, reverb to that, that would lengthen that. Different groove to We're not just changing the sound here, we're actually changing the feel. I want you to listen out for the feel that that gives you. And the third point I would like to uh, make is something I'm going to call accent. Where is the accent? If I turn up the backbeat, uh, i.e. our snare drum here, or it could be your clap. So we're putting an emphasis on the two and the four. One, two, three, four. Versus if I turn these down, We still have a backbeat, but now the kick is what's driving the groove. Very different sounding groove. Versus. See what I mean? So that's accent. And you can do that with, say, the hi-hats as well. If I change the every other hi-hat, what we call the offbeat, this gives another groove as well. So nothing's moved in time yet, or even changed tone or drum, but now we have a different groove just by changing the accent. Whatever loops you're playing with or drum beats that you might be making, I want you to be listening out for accents, tone and length. And one other element I'd like you to listen for is placement. So this is this can be quite subtle if you're new to it, but if I use our snare drum as an example here again, You'll find in some loops, the snare or the clap is what's called pushed, uh, meaning slightly ahead of the beat. Now we're talking a matter of milliseconds. It's very subtle, but listen to how this adds some urgency to the groove. It's a very different lean. The way your body might move to this is different. 
versus this. Right? Sounds different, right? Different groove. And we can do the opposite. We can we can pull the backbeat so it's lazy. And this is a different lean again. I've exaggerated that to make it more obvious for you, but I want you to be listening out for those four elements. We've got tone, length, accent, and placement. And one last experiment on placement. If I move the hi-hats late, you'll see what happens here as well. We get lo-fi hip-hop. No, I'm joking. We get a very another type of lazy groove that makes the snare and kick sound ahead of time. And if we move every other hi-hat, this might look familiar to you because in one of my previous videos, this is how we get swing. That would be eighth swing. So placement, accent, tone, and length, all elements to groove that I want you to be listening out for because they apply to drums as well as instruments. So let's move into the tracks and have a look. Okay, let's look at Holding On For Your Love. Here is our groove, our boots and cats, if you will. It's a combination of audio loops and some MIDI. So we're listening out for tone, placement, accent, and length. So we have quite a short kick. We have a longer clap. That's giving us a backbeat accent. So you know where the lean is on the two and the four. And as you can see on the way from, for this loop, the clap is slightly early, like I was mentioning in the uh, 808 example earlier. It's really subtle, but when you get an ear for listening out for these kind of things, you'll be able to understand your grooves a little better. So listen out for that early clap. And we have an offbeat hi-hat accent as well. It's not too long. So mostly very tight drums, definitely a backbeat accent. Holding on for your love is the, the groove combination is between the drums, the bass and the vocal. So let's put the bass in. As you can see, as I was also saying in the 808 section earlier, Note length matters, and you can see some are longer than others because that affects the groove. Now, come back to the bass line. Let me just put the vocal in. And what I want you to listen to is where the vocal falls with the bass and where they bounce off each other, counterpoint each other, if you will. So Tasia Sky is a holding word. Holding on for your love, holding on for your is on the snares. The bass is in between those. But we land together on the on. And I leave a gap for the for your love. And we also join on the I just keep holding. I just keep holding. I want to introduce you this concept of what I call plant and push. And again, it's that syncopation on beat, off beat thing that we mentioned in our groove tutorial. So I've put the grid onto, this is kick drums. So 
these notes here, they're on the strong beats. These would be planted. See how this is ahead of the strong beat? This is pushed. This is syncopated in other terms. You would call it syncopated. This would also be pushed, especially if this wasn't here. Listen to this. Another good example of the use of space. That's a different groove to this. This is like an end to the sentence, if you will. Just thinking in terms of vocal phrasing, language phrasing. Music is a language. This is a phrase. So everything affects everything else around it. So we have a nice space here where I'm letting the snare breathe. And also the vocal phrase for your love. So again, we have two planted here. We have pushed, planted, planted, pushed. And that's based on where the vocal is and where your groove is. So we're listening to everything all together. The point is I want you to develop an ear for where you want to push the groove, plant the groove, etc. And you'll hear I plant on the, uh, with the vocal, I just keep holding. I just keep holding, I just keep holding. Could even do this. I want you to put a bass note on every vocal. I just keep holding. So those, those would be planted. I'll show you the rest of the instruments. They aren't doing anything too rhythmical. So these aren't necessarily part of the groove, really. They're just planting the chords at the beginning of the bar. So all together. And all those together create the groove. Okay, so let's have a look at Mant Deep's Angel. Okay, uh, my first thoughts when I heard this track were, uh, what's wrong with that? <laughs> that sounds great. I think you can be proud there. Don't uh, put yourself down. That's, um, that's definitely better than I was doing when I started. So you can pat yourself on the back. But seeing as you have asked for my critique, let me give you the thoughts on what I've noticed regarding groove. Let's start with the drums. So it's quite similar to the the holding on for your love groove in the sense that it's heavy on the backbeat. Uh, but we have a much bigger kick here. I know this is the trend in Europe. So I'm not telling you not to use this kind of kick. But if you're going to use a big kick, we need one that doesn't swell like this. That's slowing down the groove, definitely. Because if I get rid of the low frequencies, listen to how the groove tightens up. Versus. If you're listening for danceability, this is much tighter. So that's one factor. This might sound impressive because it's, it's long and big, but there's something wrong with the, the groove there. And it's because this kick drum is uh, too late to reach its maximum energy. We can do a quick fix here. Obviously I would rather find a new kick drum, but I just wanted to make you aware of this free plugin, which is really handy. It's called STFU. If you understand the acronym, you know that's not safe for work. <laughs> but what we can do is use it to shorten your kicks, see if that improves the groove without losing much bottom end.
You see? This. Versus this. See how much slower that feels when it's longer? So that's one aspect I noticed. Uh, you have an early clap, just like the loop I used in Holding On For Your Love. That's fine. But if we listen to how loud the claps are versus the rest of the percussion. I feel you may have chosen that loop with the big clap to compensate for your big kick. <laughs> and that's the right decision, but understand it affects the groove in the same way. So... This is a lot more of a a boom bap rhythm. Boom bap boom bap versus boots and cats and boots and cats and boots and cats. If that makes sense, because the percussion in between the kick and the clap is much lighter. So be aware how that affects your groove. We can see what the offbeat hi hat accent would sound like with your groove. It's different. I'm not sure if it's better or worse. We'll leave it for now. Let's move on to the bass. Okay. My first thoughts are too many notes. Yes. I'll tell you what I can hear. Let me just take this off the kick drum. The bass sounds like it's ahead of the drums. Because this long kick kind of delays our groove a little. Can you hear how the bass pushes ahead of the drums? I think that could be improved. Now in Ableton, we can just add time delay to the track itself. But if you don't have Ableton, there is a free plugin called Sound Delay by Vox Engo, which does exactly that. We're going to start with 10, 10 milliseconds. Let's have a listen. I think we can go even more. 10 is a lot. So let's carry on. I'm going to go to 15. Okay, I think that's too far. Somewhere in between. Okay, that's better. Let's put our kick, shorter kick back in. Okay, we can come down again. Yeah, I'm happy with 12. 12 milliseconds late. Sits with the groove much better. Let me AB that for you. So this is without. This is with. Can hear the bass fall in the pocket a little more. What we call in the pocket. I hope so. It's very subtle, but over time, that's the kind of ear I'm hoping you'll develop just by listening out for these things. Let's keep moving. So our next part is the pad. That's fine, that's not adding to the groove. We have a pluck here, what's this, pluck high. And a pluck low. That 
that's a lot in the mid-range. Let's come back to that. And we have the melody. Yep. So the melody's fine. I like the flute. I think it's clear our lesson here is not enough space, too much things going on. So straight away, I'm going to mute both of these plugs. We'll come back to those. The first thing I want to do, if you can see here on the melody, I've marked some green elements. And these are what I consider to be our plants and pushes, basically the groove accents in this flute part. Let me solo the flute. So those are what I consider to be the main accents of the flute. I'm just going to do the same here. Our aim is going to be make our bass more sympathetic with the drums and the flute. Let's just focus on the four bars for now. Okay. Some elements do work. I like this. These line up nicely. This one's fine. We'll come back to this one. This is a problem. I don't like how that is late. Again, we're fine here. So this is all fine. These line up. I call this a turnaround on the bass. Did them, did them. I'll tell you what we'll do first is make some space and then try and fill it back in tastefully. Yes. Straight away, what I would do is move all these left. Let's fill some space now. I'm going to put this one here. So it's a similar rhythm to the first bar. What I would do here is the first time round, simple, and the second time round, more complicated. So let's make the eight bar phrase. But that right there is working better than it was, definitely, with the flute. I need to check it with the vocal. Yes, that's, that's the kind of thing. Let me bring the vocal over. That's fine. The vocal is entirely planted. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No uh, pushes or syncopation in there. So it's not interfering with our groove. That is fine. 
Let's make a decision on these plugs. Which one do we keep, if any? It's definitely not both. That's okay. Nope. It's the, um, the high one. But I would have it much lower. And as you can see here, I've, I've been playing around with an EQ because your mid-range is covered by the pad. You don't need more instruments in this area, especially if there's a vocal there. So for me, what this is doing is more like the shaker in Holding On For Your Love. You know, I, I did the shaker in the second half of the chorus to pick up the pace. That's kind of how I view this part. I wouldn't have it running all the way through the verses and things. So this would go around eight bars. And then we add the pace. But I will only add the high frequencies because we we've got enough in the from the pad something like that I'm not going to go into the engineering side of uh, arrangement but that's the principle it's more of a pace pickup now we do have one more lead actually we have two more leads um Let's check this one. I know they don't play at the same time, but it's important the whole track has some kind of groove coherency. So when new things come in, they don't sound completely sandwiched in from somewhere from another track, for example, which is sometimes the case when people are working with samples as opposed to writing their own parts. It's easy for the track to sound like, well, disparate samples have been put together. So one of the ways you can do this is make sure everything grooves together. That's fine. That works with the bass. No problem. Now, there is a fourth lead instrument because we've got the vocal, we've got the flute, we have the pluck, and we have a saxophone. And I think you can tell our lesson here is less is more. <laughs> um, it's a good sax line. What I would do with the sax is make another track with it. So we've got the the vocal is a lead, the flute is a lead, the pluck is a lead. That I think that's plenty. Don't want to overload people with too many melodies, too many hooks. Even if they're all good, that can work against you. Uh, much better to spread them out across different tracks. So I would make another track with that sax. There's nothing stopping you reusing it. So I think this is a good improvement now. Definitely improved the groove of the original, in my opinion. Right then, I think we'll wrap it up there. Massive thank you to Mant Deep for reaching out to me with the question, and even bigger thanks for providing me with those stems to the track. That was really helpful. Thank you very much. Very brave of you to um, have your track dissected <laughs> online. Um, but no, I think the track is great. Congratulations on the release. And I see you're still releasing more. And they are improving. I can hear that. Uh, so onwards and upwards. Um, no doubt you have a great future ahead. So keep it up. And for the rest of you, I hope we all learned something. If you did, leave us a like. If you loved it, leave us a sub. And in the meantime, go and experiment with groove stuff. Bye-bye. So